So arrays or lists are great when you have lots of items that you want to join together. And in the case we've seen already, it could be a bunch of friends or it might be items on a to-do list. So for example, let's imagine we have our, our list here and we might have to buy things from the shop like bread and milk and eggs and so on. Now, dictionaries are another type of data structure and they are a little bit different to lists. Just like in the real world, dictionaries are made up of um, pairs of keys or sort of words and values, which in the case of a real dif uh, dictionary would be the definition, this bit, that relates to the word that you're looking at. So this is a bit like our key and this is a bit like our value. So to imagine the dictionary data structure, um, we need to imagine it as something that has these key and value pairs. So we could think of um, an example where we might want to do that might be, say, a phone book or uh, yeah, a database of people's phone numbers. So let's say we've got a key and this could be John again. And maybe John's phone number might be 0711122 or 223 even, 005. And maybe we might have another person in there. And we could add another one, Carl, and maybe his phone number, maybe he's old school, got a bit of a landline. Um, please don't phone these numbers, by the way. I have no idea if they're real or not, but I imagine if they were, that nobody wants to hear from you. So this is our dictionary data structure. It's basically got three items in it. One, two, three. But those items are made up of keys and values. And if we want to get a value from the dictionary, then we access it via its key. So just like a list, our dictionary would be referred to by a uh, name. So in this case, let's call it something like phone book equals our data structure. And in order to get values out of the phone book, like I say, we reference them using the key. So the name of the dictionary is phone book. And just like with lists, we use square brackets and we enter the key we want. And if we were to run that, it would output the value that is associated with that key. Now these keys can be any value we like, so they don't have to be strings. We could have used integers, we could have used reals or floats, uh, could even use boolean, but it'd be a bit strange. Um, but most often, you'll be using a string as the key. Equally, the value can be anything you like. The value could be a string, an integer, a float, a Boolean number, or indeed, it could even be a list or a dictionary itself. So you could have a dictionary in here that is referenced by a key within a sort of parent dictionary. And we will look at that because actually that's a really, really, really useful thing. Uh, and we'll be looking at that in another video. So let's look at how we use dictionaries in Python. OK, so here we are in Python and I want to create a new dictionary. So I'm going to do one that stores a phone book. So I'm going to call it PB for phone book is equal to... And now, rather than square brackets, which I use for making a list, I have to use curly brackets. And that tells Python I'm making a dictionary. Now, I've got a choice at this point. I could just make curly bracket open, curly bracket closed, and that would tell Python to make a new empty dictionary. Or I could initialize it 
with some initial values. Uh, and so I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start it off with uh, a phone book that contains the key John paired to using a colon the value 0711122305. Close quotes. Now notice here, I have used a string to represent the phone number. I have not used an integer. If I wanted to use an integer, I wouldn't be putting it in quotes. Now, the reason I've done that is because of this little zero at the front. If I put this in as an integer, that leading zero would be dropped. I mean, if you put the number 02 into Python as an integer, it just returns or saves the two bit. It doesn't need the leading zero. So whenever we put phone numbers in, you can't put them in as integers. You have to put them in as strings, otherwise you lose the leading zero. Okay, that's just an aside. Let's go back to finishing off our dictionary. So I've got John paired with that phone number, and I'm going to pair another number as well. So I'm going to use a comma for my next pair of values. And I'm going to have Sophie paired with using colon the phone number 0780111. Oh, sorry, 1109222. Close quotes. And then I'm going to finish my dictionary there. So my dictionary now contains two items, John and Sophie, and the, or two, ke uh, two keys, I should say, John and Sophie, and the values assigned to those keys. So if I want to print this out, I can just type PB, and there's my dictionary. And we can use some of the same methods that we used with our lists. For example, if I wanted to prove that there were two items in my dictionary, I could use len of phone book, and there are two pairs of keys and values in my phone book. Notice it doesn't say there are four things in my phone book. It says there are two because this is one thing and this is the second thing. Okay, let's look at adding some other items to our phone book. To do this, all we need to do is use the name in the phone book now this is a bit weird, we now do use square brackets and we enter the name of the key we want so I'm going to add Carl, close square brackets and I'm going to say that the value or the key Carl in the phone book has got assigned to it the value 01189331245 enter now if I look at my phone book you'll see we've got Carl, John and Sophie and the length of my phone book now has three items in it. So let's say we want to get a value out of our phone book. Let's say I wanted to know what Sophie's phone number was. Well I could just type PB which is the name of my phone book or my dictionary, square brackets, enter the key I'm after, Sophie, and it will give me the paired value. So we've looked at initialising a new dictionary, we've looked at finding out the size of the dictionary, adding a new value to the dictionary, and getting values out of a dictionary. Well, much like with lists, we may want to remove items. Um, let's say we wanted to get rid of Sophie's phone number from the list. Well, in lists, we use the dot .remove method, but with dictionaries, we use a different method called dot .pop. And uh, to pop something is sort of to pop it off the top, and then it's not there anymore. So we use the name of the dictionary, dot pop, and in brackets, we use the key that we wish to get rid of. And it will return the value that we've popped off. And if we print the items in our dictionary again, you'll see that Sophie and her phone number are no longer there. If I want to update an item in my dictionary, let's say that Carl now has a mobile phone, we can do that just like we did with lists by 
entering the key that we wish to access and assigning a new value to it. And now if I look at my dictionary, you'll see that the value for Carl has changed. Testing if a key is in the dictionary is just like testing for an item in a list. We can use if and then the item we're looking for, so in this case let's do Carl again, in the name of the dictionary, print Carl is there, so this should print Carl is there, and it does. However, if we did that with Zoe in the phone book, print Zoe is there, else print Zoe is not there, this should print Zoe is not there because there is no Zoe in our phone book. Finally, we're going to look at iterating through all of the items in our, in our uh, phone book dictionary. So we use a for loop just like we did for lists. So for, and for this one, uh, let's see for person in phone book, and that will give me all of the keys in the phone book. So I could do print, oops, not in quotes, otherwise it gives me the literal value, print person. So this should just give me Carl and John. But I want the phone numbers of Carl and John. So to do that, we use the same starter, but in our print statement, we can do things a little bit differently. Let's do person so we get the name, and let's join onto that a, a colon, so it's going to say Carl colon, and then, a, and then the phone number we're interested in. Now to get a value from a dictionary, remember that we need to know the name of the dictionary, in this case it's PB, and we need the key that unlocks the value. Well the key is being stored in the person variable. So if I do square bracket person, this is like saying, every time the loop goes round, it's like saying person will be replaced with say Carl, then a colon, and then the value that I get if I put PB Carl. And the next time it goes round, it would give me the value I would get if I put PB John. So if I press enter on this, it should say Carl and his phone number and John and his phone number. And indeed it does. So that's just a little bit complicated, trying to get your head around how to access the value from the dictionary, we need to know the dictionary's name and we need to know the key that unlocks the value. But that key is supplied by the variable that we've declared in our for loop. So for that variable's value is going to be each of the keys stored in the PB phone book. And each time we iterate round, that value of person becomes the next key in the dictionary. So that's dictionaries. Dictionaries organize data into key value pairs. Values are accessed by referencing their key. And just like lists, the whole dictionary is referred to by a single variable identifier. To help really consolidate your understandings of lists and dictionaries, I'd like you to now think about the differences between them. So, in what ways are lists and dictionaries similar? In what ways are they different? And which do you think would be more appropriate for storing a list of jobs that you need to do or a list of your friends' addresses? I'll leave you thinking about those things as you work on uh, understanding the differences a bit more. And I would highly encourage you to get straight now into Python and have a little go at putting together uh, a to-do list of things to do 
or an address book for your friends in order to practice these different skills that you've been learning about.